tell you guys something that might make you sad at first if you're an adult. Children laugh about 200 times a day more than we do. What's happened to us? Well, laughter is that outward expression of joy, and it trickles thin as the realities of life and responsibilities come upon us. But that joy can be rekindled. And I want to share with you how the simple act of riding a bicycle can make you laugh like a kid again. So I'll always remember my first bike back when I was a little girl. Riding free, anywhere and everywhere, pigtails flying in the wind. A bike as a kid is that ticket to freedom. Do you remember? It was all about fun and trying new things. For me, it was all rainbows and daisies. Maybe it felt like this to you. Oh yeah, buddy, he says. <laughs> what a sense of complete uninhibited joy. Well, for me, as I grew up, I continued cycling, but riding had more of a sense of purpose. Unlike my childhood, I had to think of things like pacing myself and endurance training and tight lycra outfits, but <laughs> I loved it. And later, I began working in the bike industry, which was amazing to me. My career grew quickly, and within five years, I was running the U.S. subsidiary of a major global cycling brand. And overall, I felt very fortunate. I didn't think that I was missing out on anything in, in cycling or in life. Until one day came the ride that rocked my world, sent me on a tailspin, and taught me about joy. So three years ago, my company had organized a cycling trip around the island of Taiwan, where our global headquarters is. It was for the heads of all the corporate subsidiaries worldwide to come together over this experience. So there were 21 of us, and as the general manager of the US organization, I was the American on the trip, and I was also the only female general manager. So this little team building ride, it was 900 kilometers and took eight days, and was pretty much required or expected. So the plan was, each day we'd wake up in a new town, We'd ride 70 or 80 miles to the next new town. We'd have a big dinner. We'd bond and learn from each other. We'd drink some Taiwan beer, have some laughs, and then do it all over again the next day, and so on around the perimeter of the island. So I took a deep breath. I got trained and ready. I had really cute bike clothes that our company had just launched. <laughs> and I had a top of the line bike that I put pink tires on. I was really nervous, but I was excited. But then came the storm. And this week turned into the hardest physical challenge I'd ever had. So luck would have it that that week in Taiwan was a cold front of the century. Literally, we had extreme cold temperatures, wind, and rain. And I was going to be riding a bicycle for 900 kilometers up and over mountains in a foreign country with a bunch of guys. Fantastic. <laughs> So much for my cute bike clothes, because I was going to be <laughs> buried under a bulky rain jacket in as many layers as I could possibly put on every day. This ride, it pushed me to my limit. I was in a time zone 16 hours ahead, riding until 3 a.m. my time. I was just exhausted from fighting the cold and the, the rain and all the headwinds. My confidence was shattered from weaving in and out of scooters on these busy city streets now that were slippery too. And I had no sense of direction in a foreign place with Chinese letters everywhere that I couldn't read. There were climbs that were physically grueling and a cold so intense with that wind chill that going back downhill, hanging onto my handlebars, I couldn't even squeeze my brakes because I couldn't move my fingers. And those deep breaths were like a knife in my chest and my eyes were watering so badly I couldn't see. I just wanted off that bike. And culturally, I wasn't home. There was no comfort food after these long rides. <laughs> I get off my bike, so exhausted after riding for eight hours and fighting that cold, and all I wanted was a hot, creamy, tomatoey plate of pasta, and instead was served seaweed salad with squid. Oh, and fried bumblebees from the local cuisine. They are not hearty, let me tell you. 
Our group certainly had some great moments of laughter and camaraderie and learning and beautiful scenery that will stay with me forever. But we all struggled. And deep down, I had that nagging voice in my head, always questioning whether I could go the distance, you know, suggesting that maybe I find a way out. But I kept pedaling and pedaling and pedaling. And on day eight, I finished. We had a huge reception at the end. And believe me, I was really happy that I was done. But as I was catching my breath later and was pulling myself back together again, I deeply reflected upon this ride because as tough as it was, I was realizing that I had never found such a joy on two wheels. And I thought, why is this happening to me? That wasn't joyful fun. That was really hard. And OK, fine. Maybe we've all heard the stories of people who found intense happiness and joy by overcoming some major life challenge. But that wasn't really the case with me, because bikes were part of my life and even part of my career. And as cold and harsh as that ride was, and as much as I don't like eating squid every night, Deep down, I still kind of liked all that riding. I found that my journey taught me to look at joy differently. Because as a child, joy is all sunshine and giggles, right? Nothing matters but that unabashed fun and amusement. But as an adult, profound joy can be found through overcoming challenges. Not that it feels good in the heat of the trial, but when you're done, there is a deep reward in that sense of achievement. And I found that when I came home after my ride, nothing felt the same to me anymore. Everything was lighter. First of all, I felt like my capabilities had just increased tenfold. But I saw that the bicycle had changed me. I had rediscovered joy within the challenge of my adventure. And it made me hungry and excited for what's next. What's my next challenge? Because I love that feeling. So here's what I learned. Facing something that seems nearly impossible to you and overcoming it, that can be deeply invigorating. Overcoming our challenges, it lifts us up, makes us stronger, and makes it easier and more pleasurable next time. But on the flip side, if you give in to your challenges, and maybe on a hill like this, if you stop halfway, it's much harder to restart because you've lost your momentum physically and emotionally. So throwing in the towel on your challenges, it can set you back. But overcoming them makes you stronger, and it feels great. I learned that overcoming distances that I once thought impossible, if you take it one mile at a time, it's now achievable. I once thought riding 900 kilometers, that's so far. Who could possibly be doing that, especially from mile one? But if you go one mile at a time, it's attainable. So how many areas of our lives do we get so overwhelmed with what we have to do and we can't see our way through and it's raining outside, but we take one step at a time and then we later see with wonder how far we've come. We all know that life stresses can suck away our joy. But stress can be relieved through cycling. As the pedals keep turning and turning underfoot, the multitasking in your head it stops because the body takes over. The lungs fill, the blood pumps, and the stress works out of you with each pedal stroke. Far too many people go through their day so burdened with all the responsibilities swirling in their heads when something as simple as a bicycle ride can just calm it and clear it. I also learned how rewarding a deep appreciation for nature can be. When you're on a bicycle, you're in the world around you. You're not shielded by a dirty car window or viewing nature from a TV on your couch. On a bicycle, it's you and your surroundings, up close and personal. I can actually smell real sage. I can feel the morning mist on my cheeks. I can hear the laughter of children on the playground as I ride by. My life is much richer because of cycling. And all in all, the simple act of riding a bicycle can bring joy to your life. And you don't have to go through a really hard experience like I did just to realize that. I know I was a case of not seeing the forest through the trees. But now that I see and understand just how happy riding a bike can be, I just want to share it. So here's my call to action. I want you to stand up right now. Come on, stand up out of your seats. OK, I want you to close your eyes. Pretend that you are six years old again. 
Okay, you remember? Now I want you to reach out and grab the handlebars. I want you to kick your foot over the bars and gather your balance. Now in your mind, I want you to start pedaling and don't stop for 10 seconds. Okay, come on, let's go. Let's go faster. Do you feel the wind and the rush? Isn't it fun? <laughs> okay, open your eyes. Now that you remember that joy, I urge you to get out and ride a bicycle. It's one of the most rewarding things you can do if you allow yourself to really experience what it has for you. And it will make you laugh like a kid again. Thank you.